This is it. This is Lake Tresamino. This is gonna be, this is basically home. This is the home, this is the swimming pool for the next two, three days. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, just gone out for a little bit of a recce. And I'm not gonna lie, like it is warm. It's and it was it was a little bit choppy today. It was oh, I was kind of like swimming in a big cup of tea, if if uh, that makes any sense. And and but the weird thing is, it's I think we've got up to like 38 degrees today uh, air temperature. I think the water is getting beyond 30. But it'd be easy to sort of dwell on that and and sort of say maybe it's a problem, dehydration, heat stroke. However, I'm. I'm I'm kind of inclined to think it's maybe a blessing. Maybe from Poseidon, Mother Nature, I, I'm not entirely sure, but, but, but what, this is what I'm telling myself anyway, that because I feel so ready to go, like sort of just like a, like a horse, like an untamed horse ready to go, it's almost like the warm water is almost just like pulling the reins a little bit because you, you can't obviously just go and gun it in water that warm. That's the theory anyway. That's, that's, that's what I'm telling myself to make me feel a little bit better. Well, so, the, you know, the first thing that hits you when you meet Ross is uh, this giant smile and this sort of enthusiastic ball of energy that was, um, you know, quite unexpected, really. Okay, it is five o'clock and we are, basically, this is my humble abode in, um, oh, we've got a fly in my eye. <laughs> the swing's off. <laughs> You know, my impression, because we didn't really know anything about Ross before that, was that um, he was going to be this quite clean-cut, gym-orientated person that was, you know, from a slightly different world to the world that we exist in out at sea. There's, there's been, to be completely honest, there's been a lot of things that have kind of gone wrong over the last 48 hours. Um, some of the crew are missing. They've had uh, flights cancelled, so people are stuck in Amsterdam. Uh, and it's just... but. But the people who are here, and, and people are still trying to get here, it just, um, I don't know, like this, that, that kind of shared adversity seems to just be bringing everybody together. So like I said, it's five o'clock in the morning, um, the rest of Tresemino is asleep, but, but us as a team, we're up. And uh, yeah, despite everything that's gone wrong, just immense gratitude and uh, feeling incredibly lucky. There was, there was even a moment yesterday as well, we were all sitting around and it was kind of the final supper. And I just looked around and there were just people from, different professions, walks of life, from come from all over the world as well. Uh, just for this what, one swim, I just, oh yeah, I don't wanna get too, get too choked up uh, so early, but it just, um, even to get to the start line, it, it's been a real challenge and, and, and everybody around it, I was incredibly indebted to them. So uh, yeah, that, that was quite nice. I think swimming for four days non-stop is a very different challenge to uh, being able to stop uh, I think the idea of, of just having to keep going relentlessly is uh, a quite a different beast, really. Ross surprised me before with his resilience and his ability to push through. So if anyone can do it, he can. Um, but, it, you know, it's such a, a big challenge. But, you know, because he's Ross, uh, there's a possibility. And even if that possibility is only 5 or 10%, then I'm down with it. You know? sport, society, it, it needs a few people who are just kind of wired a little bit wrong. I just think back to our caveman ancestors and there would have always been one who wanted to see what was beyond the horizon. You know, there, there would have been others who were amazing at just kind of making this camp, keeping everybody safe, family, you know, nurturing everybody. But there would have been one who just went, I wonder what's across there. Ross is still going and maintaining an excellent pace. Yeah, he feels otherwise well in himself. Uh, the usual things that we would expect at this stage within the within the swim are cropping up, including cramp, which is uh, intermittent at the moment. But we're trying to balance that out with the electrolytes we're providing him. Yeah, so Ross's main issues is he's having cramps in his calves that have been uh, near enough since the start of the swim. They've started to ascend, so they've gone into his legs primarily his hamstrings. So he was struggling a little bit in keeping his pace. Then he was struggling with his tummy. Um, we were getting quite a lot of fluid through him and salts. He was getting quite a lot of bloating, feeling a bit sick, um, which is a bit of a concern because if we can't keep the fuel going in, it can spell disaster. Um, but fortunately, we managed to resolve that. 
and we've managed to solve the vast majority of those problems. He's just still got a few cramps now. We medics, uh, we rely a lot on examination. Um, history is key, of course, but actually being able to examine our patient and get observations that tell us exactly what's going on with them. So things like the heart rate, the blood pressure, how well are they getting oxygen into them? All these things are really, really important. Um, so taking that away, it's almost like losing a limb, honestly. Well, the most important rule is that basically he has to, to, to uh, swim uh, by his own means, or by his own force. He's not allowed to, uh, to touch anybody. He, nobody's allowed to push him or to pull him. He has to get into the water on his own. He has to exit the water on his own. And uh, during the swim, no one is basically allowed to, to touch him. And that's basically the most important thing. The whole thing is quite, you know, difficult. Um, but then you build up during the course of the swim. Slowly it builds up to what is known as flow state, where suddenly everything seems to sink and Ross is suddenly swimming with rhythm. His face is in the water, he's meditating. And that rhythm kicks in and suddenly you're in flow state. And you'll remain like that for as long as something keeps you going, or something stays in rhythm. And then all of a sudden, something will click it out again. Something will go wrong and the flow state switches off again. And that is usually the signaling the beginning of the end of that swim. But those moments of, of flow state are golden. And sometimes they last for an hour, sometimes they last for a couple of hours. Uh, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're the moments where you make the most progress mentally and physically through the whole process. So we, we know that anyone who stays awake for 24 hours plus, um, ultimately you're looking at an impairment in their cognition that's similar to having a level of alcohol, a blood level of alcohol that would mean you're over the limit. So they're very impaired. Zero of fire, 20, 20 to 6 at the minute. Uh, Ross is on his third lap of the course. Um, again, a swimming distance, what he's actually GPS swam is 52 kilometers at the minute. Uh, he's in good spirits. He's stroking pretty well. Um, stroking 52 strokes per minute. We're stretching out his uh, feeds now into maybe, so we started off at 20 minutes, now we're into half an hour, now we're pushing it to 40 minutes, which means that we're trying to get more progress from his swimming, instead of just stopping sometimes, the wind has pushed us back, so we're actually trying to get more progress. Uh, he, he swam for, uh, for 24 hours already, which is an um, amazing feat. And so he was a little bit slow, and also his stroke was a little bit uh, Tired, looked like he was tired, but now the the complete uh, the wind has basically completely gone. So so it's uh, he's in a very good spirit, and uh, the wind is not giving his uh, is not a hindrance any longer as it was yesterday when it was quite strong wind in the in the beginning. Today a little the challenge will be the the heat because the water is quite warm. It's, it's already at 29 degrees and it's going up, so this is quite. Uh, it's quite a high water temperature and we have to take care uh, that he's not overheating actually. And also the air temperature is going up, uh, it's, it's around 28 degrees now. But that I think is, is, is the biggest challenge right now. So this uh, the, the hottest week uh, of, uh, of the year is about uh, 33 degrees. And uh, there's Caronte, uh, a heat wave. The, the, the sunlight uh, is very dangerous to stay under the sun for uh, a lot of hours. Brilliant. We've, wow. got, we've got more volume going through now, mate, as the temperature's going up. OK. Yeah. We're getting some temperature issues. He's starting to get hot because there's just no breeze. The water's quite warm. The sun's beating down on him. With anyone who's in water for too long, you know, it's, it is still below his core body temperature. So over time, 
especially as his movement slows down, hypothermia is a problem. So his, his, his core temperature dropping too much. But for today, with the sun beating down on him, as I say, all those factors, hyperthermia, as he's working so hard, that's, that's a, something we need to keep a close eye on. We also need to make sure he's getting enough salt and enough water into him, because he's going to be losing quite a bit as well, even though he's in the water. 32.7 here in the shallows. That's, uh, you're cooking your potatoes then, you know? So, no, there's no human consuming that. Uh, I think our air temperature, we'll do it now in a sec, but we're getting 44 off the boat, 45. And uh, the reflective off the deck, and then we'll see officially what the air temperature is. So we've just gone and got some uh, ice lollies, ice, uh, really cold water, just because it's so hot out here and there's no wind, there's no there's no choppiness whatsoever, so it's just a cooling down really. And then we've also got in some cloth caps as well, so we'll rinse those in cold water and put them on his head just to try and cool him down a bit. Now uh, we're getting 31.7, this is the water temperature. Um, and this is what Ross has been uh, swimming in at the present time, so we're actually 32 now. So, to give you an idea, World Aquatics uh, rules or uh, FINA rules uh, would say no swim at 31, would be no professional swim, open water swim, they would cancel a swim due to heat exhaustion. Yeah, so I'm afraid it's, uh, it's coming to a conclusion now. Oh, this yeah, is going to be fun. Okay, okay. Again, sorry. Oh. You want to get on that side? No, it's fine. Underneath that. Thank you. Next one. Oh, thank you. 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 Ass drops, temperature. Now it's the opposite from, say, Loch Ness or uh, some of the cold stuff I do. It's complete opposite end of the scale. So the physical effort to even do what he did. So very few people in the world can do that. Uh, it's okay. Can you do a 15 second again? He swam 70 kilometers in a GPS. He swam nearly nearly four laps of the course. And, uh, you know, he, he assessed it and he made a call himself and we, we talked about it on the boat and we, you know, as, as decisions what we can do and he, he eventually said, that's it, that's, I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I just want to, I'm stopping. And then he touched the boat and then the swim was over. So it was tough, yeah, it was tough, but it, I can tell you it was the right call. It's extremely hot out there, you have no idea. The medics were really worried about him continuing, but again, they're trying to be supportive as well. But medically, they were assessing, you know, how how much do we, how far do we go with this? Ah, oh, okay. Obviously, uh, didn't go quite to plan. Um, uh, I'm, I'd be lying if I said this one didn't sting a little bit. Obviously it does. That heat out there, it, it's so hard to describe. It was just, it was completely alien to my physiology. It was, um, I love how Jer talks about it. You just said you're boiling your potatoes at that point, and that is, that is the only way to describe it. You, you can never know in the moment. You, you do think, are we doing the right thing? But ultimately, the signs were there and with the discussions we had, it seemed like the right thing to do. Yeah, we'd always knew the heat could be a problem, but until you put it into practice, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. But from the, you know, from the footage and from the news, it, it, was, it was brutal and it was only getting hotter. You know, nearly touching 40 degrees, water temperature 31, you know, approximately, um, you know, and rising. So, uh, yeah, we always knew that, was gonna, that could be a problem, but to what extent, you know, you don't know. Uh, what is uh, 
not normal is that you, that we had this African heat wave coming in to Italy and to Spain to towards uh, southern Europe basically, and that uh, that's a particular heat dome which is uh, shifting from Africa to 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 Italy, and that raised the temperatures even more so that it was a that's a peculiar a particular situation actually so which is hardly predictable let's say we had also thought long and hard before the swim that something called rhabdomyolysis was a a big risk and so we were assessing for that and ross showed some of the clinical signs of that but ultimately you need blood tests to tell you um, so it's, it's things essentially like muscle tightness soreness and it's difficult to differentiate between something like rhabdo causing those symptoms and having swam 70 kilometers and just being sore. Of course, he was trusting us with his health and his safety. So from, from his perspective, it was all about his pace and getting that record. And then from our side of things, we, as I say, we were reaching the, the limit of what was safe. And we were also starting to see some of the very early signs that he was struggling with uh, heat-related illness. If you get heat-related illness, so your body temperature becoming too high, or the other way, hypothermia becoming too low, it can become a big problem. Um, a lot of these enzymes are crucial for metabolism, so key functions to the body, and they will just stop. They'll slow down and then they'll stop. And at that point, that's when the person will also stop too. Uh, we know from a biochemical point of view, from the blood tests, if it's, it's something called creatine kinase, uh, this is released from the muscle again when it breaks down. If that goes above a thousand, then that's the level of rhabdo. Severe is 5,000. Ross's was just over 19,000. So that's just trying to put into context how bad this was. I knew that Ross is, uh, is a professional, so he, uh, if, 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 if his crew tells him it's better to get you out because there's no realistic chance to beat neither the time record nor the distance record, then he, would, uh, he wouldn't like it, obviously, but he would be uh, professional enough to say, OK, then the swim is over. And that's exactly what happened. From my point of view, or you know, from any any partner's view, they would probably feel more concerned for their other half than what their other half is thinking about themselves. So, from that point of view, from being on the boat with the medics, you know, um, the camera guys, the you know Ross's Gymshark PhD ambassadors, that we were probably all a bit more concerned about him than Ross was concerned about himself, and. I don't think Ross realised that swimming 70 kilometres, although he didn't achieve what he set out to achieve, it was a huge feat and a huge accomplishment. Uh, the temperature was only going to get hotter, conditions were getting just worse, So, and his health's intact. He lives to fight another day. The records are nice, but stories are maybe even better, and, and as a team, we were just sitting around this barbecue and we were just sharing stories. Because obviously I was swimming, so I wasn't quite aware what was happening on the boat. And there's just, ah, oh, just the way that everybody came together. It's just amazing. Through, through Ross, I know that he's chosen such amazing people. And I know for a fact that had it not have been all of these people come together, it could have been, um, you know, an event coming out of here and he might not be sitting here right now and he could still be in hospital. Yeah, I'm sort of leaving Italy with no records in the suitcase, but lots of stories, which that feels nice. That does feel nice. Knowing Ross, I think his, the way his brain works, he'll just always be after the next challenge. There's, there's never going to be a point where he's going to hang up his running shoes or his swimming goggles or, uh, you know, and say, that's it, I'm done. I just don't see it. Um, there's something in him which drives him on and wants, to, you know, makes him want to keep going. And uh, I think, um, I think he'll just keep going. It's taken me 37 years to understand that I have, I have to do a lot of strange stuff to feel normal. And that sounds really weird, but I just feel happy, content, at peace, when 
Hester's just throwing me bananas. I'm 50 hours into a swim and just, it just, I don't know, it's just my happy place. Pioggia scivola come un bambino rotola, sai farlo eppure tu. Prendila e stringila, è un'emozione. 